everybody. Well, uh, today I think what we're going to do is uh, the first video in a, a short series there about Magic the Gathering. It's definitely one of my hobbies. It's uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing um, and playing with friends and that. But I know from experience that if you walk into a game store or a friend's house and you start seeing all this stuff hanging around, it can be daunting. It can be uh, it can be a lot to take in. I mean, you've got deck boxes like this. They open it up. There's a million and one cards in there. All these different colored sleeves. Different other types of deck boxes that maybe it's decks in them. Maybe it's dice in them. You've got dice. You've got these tubes. You've got um, these mats. All these different colored cards put into different spots with... Um, different like outlines and numbers and some don't have numbers and what is it you know it's it's an awful lot to to learn if you're uh, just starting out and like I said it's intimidating so the whole point of this uh, this series is going to be to hopefully try to, to teach you magic um, or at least the the basics of it the, the thing is, Magic, uh, much like uh, games like D&D, if you just go ahead and grab the rule book and start trying to read the rules, it reads in legalese. Uh... Um, basically, if you just pick up the rule book, and start reading it it is so over complicated because of certain situations that could arise might arise etc and it just it doesn't flow uh very well for just a reading type type of idea so the idea of this is to kind of cut through all that it's it's a lot easier just like D&D, like i said to to be able to have somebody there to guide you through it because um, you'll see people playing magic who literally can take their entire turn inside of a minute meanwhile if you read the rules it seems like each turn should be at least five to ten um, as you follow each individual step and quote-unquote phase that they call them um, so yeah we'll try and cut through all that um, first up I think we'll sort of go over with what magic actually is um and we'll go from there okay so the only piece of that whole mess that i had up here that i'm really going to use um for this video is the map um this is something if you're a new magic player i didn't have one until i was well into playing magic for years um but i will say even if it if it doesn't have you know uh, officially licensed artwork and that all on it um go and try and grab yourself one uh your your cards you're gonna end up spending you know a little bit of money on them and the whole thing is this it's rubberized on the back no matter where you play if you're at a friend's house game store whatever it's so much easier and to you know put your cards on this and know that they're not gonna get sticky or ruined or whatever by anything that might be on the table that you didn't see. The other thing is, um, whether your cards are sleeved to protect them or not, uh, picking them up off of this is a lot easier than picking them up off this table just because it's uh, that rubber backing there. It actually gives you a little bit of give to actually get your nail, your finger up underneath the card and pull it up. Um, so again, you don't end up bending the card and damaging it which i mean you it's your hobby you don't want to ruin your hobby right it's especially stuff where you've spent money to act to get these cards and be able to to play the way you want um so with that said let's start talking about magic um so magic is a trading card game um you can buy uh packs there's all kinds of other things like uh, they'll call them deck builder toolkits, pre-constructed starter decks, um, all Each kinds. Of things. Player is supposed to be what's called a planeswalker, so it takes place. The game setting takes place in a multiverse. 
So that means there's different planes, different uh, realities, different uh, uh, planes of existence, dimensions of existence. And planeswalkers are unique beings who have what's called a spark. And that spark, uh, once it ignites in them, it uh, lets them at will travel between these planes. Now all planeswalkers have uh, some magical abilities which let them draw on power to cast spells or call allies uh, to fight for them. And you're fighting other planeswalkers for whatever goal you, you can come up with really. Um, that's what these games are, is a battle between two planeswalkers. Each match is. Um, now that being said, uh, if you want to know more about the, the lore and certain planeswalkers that you know you can get cards of or that you might read about on these cards, etc., uh, there's novels galore out there on uh, all the lore and that behind these. Uh, so, I mean, you can that, that would take eons to go through everything. Um, but uh, definitely, if you're interested, there, like I said, go grab the, the novels um, and find out what's sort of been going on. Um, now, the way that they used to do these sets, these, these cards, they come in uh, sets. So you'll see, if you go to a store, you'll see um, uh, the newest one is, I think, Kaldheim is how you pronounce it. Uh, there's other ones like Theros Beyond Death. Uh, uh, you know, uh, core sets uh, that are uh, rated, uh, named by year, so Magic. 2021 would be like the newest one that's coming out um as far as a core set it goes in that which core sets really don't have stories they're more just to help people get going with the game um but either way what they used to do was you'd have uh three sets of cards in a block um and that would basically be on one plane of existence so all the cards all the the artworks, the themes, the mechanics would all match up and sync up, um, and it was all one big story arc within that, what they call a block. Um, they've kind of changed that up as of late, where it's now uh, each set kind of hops around from plane to plane to plane to plane to plane to plane, to plane and you've kind of got this overarching story uh, that's kind of following it all around. Um, not sure if I'm a big fan of that. I kind of like the the old way better, but that's just me. Everybody's got their own their own thing. But anyways, that's that's the basic gist of how the the stories go and why you'll see so many different artworks in that. Um, examples using you know just just these cards alone um, is you know like on this card here you can see it's very uh, Roman themed, like the 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 clothing etc. is very uh, reminiscent of Rome that they used for their their inspiration um, then you go over to you know this one obviously it's been uh, it's using uh, a genie of the lamp so something more of a Middle Eastern sort of tradition as inspiration for the art and the story um, but that uh, that's just an example of it but you can sort of see through all the cards that you'll go through what's what um, the next big thing as far as knowing what magic kind of is is if you'll notice each one of these is a different color um what i'm talking about when i talk about color is actually the color of these borders so like that one's white this one's green you've got your red black blue a, a colorless or silver one and this gold one which is actually multicolored that's what actually makes up uh the cards in a game. Um, so when you make a deck, it's going to be some combination, either one of or some combination of these outer ones here. Um, each color has its own sort of inherent strategy. Uh, there's none that you know they can all sort of sort of do what the other colors do, but there's something that they do very well in most cards. Um, lean toward that kind of strategy. Um, so again, this is sort of generalizing, but on the whole, white usually is very small power creatures, um, gaining life, defense, uh, destroying um, uh, artifact, uh, 
rights, you know, things that are they're unnatural could be bent towards evil, things like that are kind of the themes and the, the stuff that they go with. Um, green tends to be very large creatures uh, getting more magical resources, which are called mana, which we'll go over later on, getting that quicker and quicker and quicker and um, being very aggressive and fast paced. Um, you've got red, which is all fire and direct damage and uh, chaos and little little small creatures that don't care if they they die in the attack. Um, you got black, which usually re uh, represents like death and bringing creatures back from the dead, uh, destroying creatures with poisons and things like that. You got blue, which is very heavy with flying and you know uh, being able to draw cards, counter spells. Uh, being, you could almost call it sneaky. It's a very uh, wizard sort of color. Um, now these two are sort of the oddballs. Colorless fits into anything. It's it's what's like an artifact. It's uh, uh, an item that any mage might use, or somebody might use something like a, like an Excalibur would have been an, an artifact card if you take the the lore and put it into into magic, or. Uh, this is a this one's a, a mechanical dragon. It doesn't actually have uh, any allegiance to any other color. Um, now these ones are multicolored cards. Multicolored cards are hybrids of two colors. So this one um, is actually a red and white. So it's it's got uh, elements of both in it, and you need to have it in a deck that plays both red and white to be able to cast it. Um, so that's sort of how the colors work. Again, very brief explanation. Um, if you ever look at the back of a magic card, what you'll actually see is these gems, these orbs on the back. Um, they're actually representing each color, um, which is what I've, I've sort of laid out here. Um, the funny thing is, if you look at them, the way that they have them, they are actually laid out to be what are complementing colors. So green and red actually complement each other. Green and white complement each other. Their, their strategies, their inherent strategies and strengths help each other. Whereas like black and green don't tend to get along so well. Blue and green, again, don't tend to get along as well. Um, their strategies are usually very opposed. Uh, so if you go with a, again, if you go side to the side, that's what, uh, those ones will actually work well together. Their strategies are just naturally going to be better meshing. Um, not to say that you can't do, like I said, that one's a, uh, uh, white red. And as you can see, they're opposing, but there, there it is. There are cards, they can work well together, but you have to work harder to make the deck work that way when you're designing it. But uh, that's sort of how the colors go. Um, next thing after this is kind of getting into uh, things of what each card type kind of is and what the card layouts are. Um, but that, I think, we'll leave for another time. Um, hopefully this wasn't too rushed of an explanation. Um, if you have any uh, you know, questions or comments about this, uh, anything that I may have left out, let me know in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode.